My name is Chiamaka Ukachuku, and I'm a Nigerian American born and raised in Somerset, New Jersey. I received my bachelor's in biochemistry and French minor from the Georgia Institute of Technology, and then went on to get my master's in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology through the Pathways program at the University of Michigan. Uh, I like to sing and dance and perform spoken word, and I'm very, very passionate about increasing representation and diversity in STEM programs. Uh, for my Fulbright project, I'm working at the Duduv Institute, which is affiliated with the Université Catholique de Louvain, and I'm working in Jean-Francois Collet's lab studying antibiotic resistance in E. coli. And so we're interested in this project because antibiotic resistance poses a major threat uh, worldwide. Uh, there are studies by the World Health Organization and the CDC that suggest within the next 30 years or so, if we don't develop new treatments, that deaths caused by bacterial infections could um, kill up to 11 million people per year, which is roughly the population size of Belgium. And so the project I'm working on is to uh, study this protein that uh, regulates the integrity of the outer membrane. And so uh, what that means is essentially understanding how uh, bacteria protect themselves and form these defense mechanisms against antibiotics or other pressures. And so my uh, task for the year is to figure out how uh, this protein works, its mechanism of action in hopes of using that information to develop more uh, effective uh, drugs to uh, attenuate deaths caused by bacterial infections worldwide. So I've always had a desire to live abroad in another country and to really integrate into the community and live as a local. Um, but I also wanted to continue my research training and to do something that would be meaningful and impactful for society. And so I wandered over to the International Center at the University of Michigan, uh, where I met with an advisor there who then told me about the Fulbright program. And I remember thinking to myself that if there were a scholarship that were meant for me, it, it would be the Fulbright. It was literally the first time I felt that everything I was passionate about, everything that I desired to do was packaged into this, uh, this scholarship. And so uh, that's why I applied. I think the first thing I would say is um, check to see if your institution has a Fulbright uh, advising office. And so the University of Michigan did, and they were extremely helpful in walking me through the application process and reading my personal statements, my statement of grant purpose. And you can also check any of your alma maters. My undergrad institution also had uh, an, an advising office for alumni as well. So I would say that would be uh, the first step. Um, and it was relatively straightforward. I feel that everything was, was well defined on the website. Uh, and then with the advising office, it was, you know, I knew what I had to do. I just had to work hard to, to submit the, a competitive application. I feel that Belgium sort of picked me in a sense. Um, and so about two years ago, um, Jean-Francois, my affiliate mentor here, gave a talk in my research lab at the University of Michigan. So uh, I was in Matthew Chapman's lab at the time, and he came to give a talk at our lab meeting. And I remember being really interested in his research and taking critical notes and asking questions. Um, but at the time, I didn't know I wanted to go to his lab, or I actually didn't know about the Fulbright at that time. And so when I uh, was getting ready to graduate uh, from my program, uh, I spoke with Matt, my advisor, and said, you know, I'd, I'd really like to move abroad and, you know, practice my French and continue doing research and training. And so he gave me a list of, of PIs uh, around the world that, you know, he said, look at their research, see which speaks out to you. And so I saw Jean-Francois' lab, and I remembered the talk from a year ago and asking all of those questions. And so I talked to Matt and said, hey, I think you know, this, would, this would be a great lab for me. And so he put us in contact, and then I got to talk to him a little bit, uh, a little more about uh, what I was interested in and, and if there was room for me to kind of have my own project. And he said, yes, absolutely, we'd welcome you. Um, and then he told me about Belgium and Brussels and said it's a great city, it's an international community, you'll be welcomed here. So at that point I was sold. I was like, Belgium it is. I would say easily the most memorable moment 
um, and during the Fulbright program and probably my life uh, happened about last weekend. <laughs> um, so I'm very, very active on social media. So I use the Fulbright hashtag and Fulbright Belgium. And a Fulbrighter from Spain found me on Instagram uh, through my <laughs> hashtag usage and, and sent me a message and said, hey, I'm coming to Brussels this weekend. It would be great if we could meet up. And I said, yeah, of course. You know, I had actually planned to spend that weekend exploring the city a bit more. And then about a day later, she sent me another message and was like, hey, I know this might be a little bit crazy, but could I possibly stay with you for the weekend? And I said to her, yes, it would absolutely be crazy. You're more than welcome to come. And so my first time meeting her, name's Desiree, uh, was when she had all her luggage and stayed with me for the weekend. Um, and so we ended up going to this like underground, hip hop, dance, freestyle uh, kind of event. Um, and so if you can imagine, there were three DJs, there was a dance floor, people from all over, young, old, you know, just kind of connected for our love for, for dance and, and music. And so um, I ended up dancing in the center of the circle for quite some time and I had an amazing time. Um, and then we met some more people there as well and they told us about another, this kind of Afrobeats dance hall event that happened right after. And so we stayed out most of the evening and, and had an amazing, amazing time. So I made a new friend, a fellow Fulbrighter and, you know, hopefully a lifelong friend as well. So I would say hands down, one of the best weekends and experiences I've had since coming here. I think that my life has already changed by being a part of the Fulbright program. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me is realizing that um, you know, the sky is the limit now and the sky itself is limitless. So I think I've, I've kind of removed some self-imposed boundaries on myself. Um, having the opportunity to live abroad and be able to do things that I'm passionate about and continue my training as a scientist has been, you know, one of, one of the greatest blessings I could ever imagine. And so um, I think secondly is the opportunity to network with scientists from around the world. Um, so I had an opportunity to present my work in a, at a lab retreat in Spain with my lab and I got to meet uh, other PIs from France and Germany and within Spain and I'm already strongly, strongly considering uh, coming back to Europe for a postdoc or finding a way to integrate that into my a PhD program. And so I think having the opportunity to really meet individuals, uh, you know, maybe in the future that I can reconnect with, I, you know, I feel more comfortable about setting up those opportunities abroad. Um, and then I would say the third thing would, would be learning to be um, more open. Um, I've come out of my shell a bit more. I'm, I'm naturally a social person, but I've learned to be even more social living in a country that I had never been before and not knowing anybody. And so those are lessons that I'm going to carry with me throughout the rest of my life.